All right, let me ask you a question. How do you go about marketing your SaaS offering when you're in a brand new category? This means that there's no three letter acronym like CRM or even marketing automation. There's no Gartner report, Forrester report, not even a G2 report. There's none of that. And to explain what it does and why they need it, it takes a paragraph because we haven't developed the words yet. You, haven't, you don't have the strategic narrative yet. This is what it felt like for sales engagement back in the early days when we were building out ToutApp. But once we got people into the product, they were like, oh my God, I need it. I, I, I gotta have it. And that was the power of the platform. However, we still face a problem. How do we actually get people's attention? Now, we did all the standard things like outbound and inbound and all those things, but that wasn't enough. We needed ways to grow a lot faster and get the attention of our ideal customers. This is when I discovered this one growth hack. This one growth hack was not only used to develop the sales engagement category in the early days, it was also used to develop the marketing automation category as well. This is where I learned about it. So in this episode, I'm gonna walk you through what that growth hack is and walk you through three examples of them in use so you can get inspired and actually use this one growth hack to grow your category and your SaaS business. Intro. everybody, welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS businesses faster with an unstoppable strategy. If you are new to the channel, welcome. I drop a video like this two to three times a week, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. That way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK Energy. Now, if you're part of my SaaS go-to-market coaching program, if you're part of this broader community, welcome. It's really awesome to see you here. We just hit 8,000 subscribers and I'm deeply appreciative of your support. And it's an honor to serve you guys, really. So we're gonna talk about this one growth hack that I used at ToutApp to help build out the sales engagement category. First, I'm gonna walk you through how I discovered it. Second, I'm gonna walk you through three examples that we used for it. And number three, I'm gonna give you some actionable steps so you can do it too. So if you're excited to dig in, go ahead and smash that like button and let's go into exactly what this growth hack is. So the growth hack is essentially, I call it the tell me where it hurts growth hack, all right? There's no official name for it. I gave it that name because there's literally no other name for it. So I just call it the tell me where it hurts growth hack. And here's the problem. The problem when we faced with ToutApp in the early days was when someone, a salesperson, looked at our tool and they got a demo, they were like, oh my God, I gotta have it. When they went through a new user onboarding, they were like, I gotta have it. And they converted at 8% to pain on their own. When we gave a demo to an entire sales team, the entire sales team came on. But the problem was there was no category for it. There's no way to call it what it was. There was no way to market for it because people didn't know what it was. And they weren't even aware of the problem that engaging with leads was a difficult thing to do. Like that was a tough thing for them to understand fully because they'd just never seen it before. Imagine people that ride around in horses and you're trying to explain electricity to them. Like they just wouldn't understand it right away. You had to show it to them. So we did the standard things from outbound and from advertising and running webinars, like all the things I've talked about in this channel we still needed more to get massive awareness as a tiny company with people that were in sales. We just needed to do crazy things to get the attention. Now, one of the things we did was get a billboard on the one-on-one. -on -one. It said salespeople, uh, the unsung heroes of Silicon Valley. Now, that's not the growth hack we we'll are talking about. That's for another day, another story. The growth hack that we did was something that I borrowed from the people that created marketing automation, the folks over at Marketo and HubSpot, because they had the same problem in those early days as well. Growth hack was essentially called the tell me where it hurts growth hack. Now here's how it works. The problem is you have your ICP, right? Now your ICP, you're solving this big problem, this big lucrative problem that you solve through your platform, but they don't really know about it. They're not fully aware of it. And you gotta like really educate them on it. This is kind of how it goes in the early days of category creation. They don't know about it, you have to educate the market. Now. One thing you can do is run ads and call them and email them and tell them like, hey, here's this big problem that's happening, right? And maybe they'll trust you, maybe they won't. Now, this is why we actually create a strategic narrative and a manifesto as part of our coaching program because that helps accelerate it. Another way to do this is using this growth hack. What this growth hack did was said, all right, they may not know this problem, but they have a bunch of other smaller problems that are top of mind for them. So why don't we go in and build a little software tool that highlights these problems, tells them how to solve it, and then upsells them to this broader problem, right? So basically what you're doing is you're creating software that, is, that you're gonna use to actually attract people. To say like, hey, you have this tiny little problem, right? And they're like, oh my God, I totally have that problem. 
And they go into this software or this tool, and then you actually help solve some of that problem. That way you build the trust, and then you upsell them. It's like, hey, by the way, if you have these problems, that means you have this bigger problem. And here's the bigger opportunity, and you should go do this. By that time, they, you have solved the problem for them, they trust you, and then you can actually get them to realize the bigger problem, which is your core product. Are you guys getting this? So that's the core principle around this tool, around this growth hack. Now, I wanna walk you through the three examples that worked brilliantly in crafting two different categories. And that way you can get inspired on using it for your own, all right? So this will make a lot more sense by the end of this video because I'm gonna walk you through three examples. The first example is the HubSpot website grader. The HubSpot website grader, here's a screenshot of an article about it that says that in 2010, two million websites were graded through the HubSpot, HubSpot website grader. And honestly, this is where I got the idea for creating a tool that solves smaller problems. Now think about it. Today, everyone knows you need a marketing automation platform, right? HubSpot is a massive company. Marketo got exited like twice. Um, and there's a long tail of smaller companies that are going after that space. In the early days when the creators of marketing automation were trying to actually educate the market, no one knew about it. It was a new term. And so HubSpot did something brilliant. They said, you know what? People may not be thinking about inbound or, or marketing automation or lead scoring or any of those things, but they are thinking about their website. They're thinking about whether their website is effective or not. So let's actually create a tool that asks them, hey, is your website any good? And that's how HubSpot gen created this HubSpot website grader, which by the way, till today is one of their biggest lead gen machines. And you literally go to this thing, which exists today, it's probably in version 20. You type in your URL and it gives you a report of exactly what your website looks like, what your grade is, what are the big things that you can fix. It highlights all these little problems that you may have and then upsells you to say, hey, by the way, if you wanna solve all these problems and have a better strategy for your website, you should probably get on a marketing automation platform. You should probably get on HubSpot. And for over a decade, they've been using this not only to create that category on marketing automation, but also to attract leads and to educate that market. That's the power of this tell me where it hurts strategy. Because when you can go after these small, tiny problems that your ideal customer has, and you provide them a solution for it, then they trust you. And then you can say, by the way, we can solve all these things and so much more if you just get on this thing, this new thing called the marketing automation platform. Or you can just get on this new thing called the sales engagement platform, right? You guys starting to see the power in this? Now, let me give you the second example. So we saw this and we were like, this is awesome. We need to do something like this because we know that if we can get a salesperson to take a demo of our tool or check out our tool or just even understand, if we can talk to them, we will convert them because that's how powerful our platform is. But we don't have enough salespeople knowing about us and we can't just cold email every single salesperson that's out there. So we went ahead and created our first Tell Me Where It Hurts tool, our growth hack. That was our Salesforce and email year in review. So we said, you know what? We do a lot around email and it's about email engagement. And, and so this is the early days. So we're like, let's go after salespeople and start educating them about how much time they're spending on email. So we started doing this thing where we set an email and review. It was at the end of the year. I remember the first time we did it, I think was 2011 or 2012, one of those two, I forget. So we did this email and review. Literally, you would go on, you would log in with your Gmail account, and then we added Salesforce, and you would create this beautiful infographic of here's how you spent the year on email, how many emails you sent, who you sent the email, most emails with, how many deals you did, what the average deal size, we just created a beautiful infographic about your year in review. And that's what got people to realize, oh my God, I'm spending a lot of time on email, I'm spending a lot of time on engagement, I'm spending a lot of time on these kind of deals. And it had this viral nature because people will share their report on Twitter and on social, and then more and more people would sign up. So this thing was massive for us. This was a tool that we ran for multiple years. And in that first year, we were like a three person company. And simultaneously, we were featured on Wall Street Journal, All Things D, New York Times, TechCrunch, you name it. We were featured on across all of these, including this niche one, which was, um, Mar I think it was like marketing automation stack or something like that. We're talking about like, yeah, get your Salesforce year in review or get your year uh, email year in review. And guess what happened? We had tens of thousands of people signing up for this and they were all salespeople. And we were able to actually show them, hey, here are some of the smaller problems that exist with how much time you're spending on email and on engagement. By the way, we have a platform that helps you, in helps you engage in the right way, helps you streamline how you communicate in your sales process. We were able to upsell them and we were able to get deal flow. We were able to create pipeline Line with tens of thousands of people that came for this smaller problem, which we knew we could upsell them to the bigger problem. Are you guys seeing the power in this? So that was our first growth hack. So the first way I really discovered this was this 
HubSpot website creator tool. And then we put it into action and we built this email year in review and boom, it just, it exploded. Like it literally exploded. It was insane how much traffic, how much media attention, how many users, how many leads we generated from that. It was incredible, honestly. So before I go into the third example, I do have a third example we did and it was awesome, just as awesome. Let me just pause here for a second. Are you starting to see the power of this growth hack? Are you starting to see how if you can go after solving some of the smaller problems, then you can actually attract people and create enough leads and pipeline to upsell them to the bigger problems because they'll trust you. If you're starting to see the power in this, can I just get a yes in the comments below? Also smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm if you haven't done so already. Now also, if you're building out your go-to-market strategy, if you're trying to figure out how to grow your SaaS business, trying to get the strategy right around your SaaS business, be sure to check out my five-point SaaS growth strategy guide. It's completely free. It goes into a lot more detail into some of these various strategies that I use to grow SaaS businesses over the last 15 years. I'll tell you about the end of this video. Let's go to example number three. Okay, so the example number three that we did, which was just as awesome, the first thing we realized, okay, what's the little problem? The little problem is, you know, people like to look at their metrics. Salespeople are competitive. So let's create an infographic, customized for them at the end of the year, and let's get a lot of people to sign up and share it and get competitive. So that was awesome, that worked well for us. So we asked like, okay, what's another small problem that people have? One of the things we realized was a lot of people, even if they had a CRM, salespeople, they always kept a little spreadsheet on the side. I don't know why, even to today, whether it's a VP of sales or an enterprise AE, they may have their CRM, but CRM suck, so they always keep this separate spreadsheet. And what we noticed was in, in, in the SEO traffic, the search volume for spreadsheet CRM was incredibly high. In fact, it's still high today. So back then it was really high. And so we said, we gotta get in on that because that's all salespeople. And so what we did was we built a little Google sheet. I literally built it myself. And it was basically a template for a CRM inside of a Google sheet. And then I went ahead and bought the domain spreadsheetcrm.com. You can still go there right now, spreadsheetcrm.com doesn't expire for another two years and it's owned by Adobe because Adobe bought Marketo and Marketo bought ToutApp. Weird, and that website is still running. And so we bought spreadsheetcrm.com and literally spreadsheetcrm.com, you can look at it right here. Uh, when you go there, it's like, hey, here's a spreadsheet CRM. It's literally a spreadsheet. Do you want it? Uh, join our private beta. And people would fill, people actually hit the private beta link. They put in their name and email, all the lead info that we ever wanted. And then we give them the spreadsheet. Basically, we just give them the spreadsheet. Like, here's the spreadsheet, have fun. And inside of that spreadsheet, we say, hey, if you're sending all these emails to all these people, do you wanna know if you need to follow up? Do you, need, do you wanna know if they opened the email or clicked on the link? Sign up for ToutApp. And literally from that spreadsheet, we would, because we integrated with our APIs, people would be able to sign up for ToutApp right from there because they'd be like, oh cool, I can track all this. Oh, and it'll also automatically tell me in here that I reached out to them and they opened the email and clicked on the link and I need to follow up. Boom, let's do it. It was like the smartest, is actually more effective than a lot of CRMs out there today. And so we actually set up Spreadsheet CRM because this was an SEO hack that worked back in the day. Because Spreadsheet and CRM was in the domain name, it picked up on page one of SEO right away. And back for, I think for a good three, four years, we were result number one. Now a lot of people run ads to it because I think they figured out the trick. But we were basically result number one when people search for Spreadsheet CRM. And of course, it's a bunch of salespeople and they would sign up for Spreadsheet CRM and we would get the lead and inside of the spreadsheet, it would upsell them to ToutApp and we would also put them on an email drip to upsell them to ToutApp and that's how we got a whole bunch of users as well. So that goes back to, it was really awesome. And if you can find, you apply any one of these three things, so here's the pattern, right? The pattern is who's your ICP? And based on your ICP, what are some little problems that they have and can you build a little tool that either highlights those problems, diagnoses those problems, or solves that problem. And then from that tool, can you naturally upsell them to your bigger new category? That's the pattern that HubSpot used with their website grader. That's the pattern that we used first with our email year in review and Salesforce year in review. And that's the pattern we then use for our spreadsheet CRM. And all three of these created massive amounts of pipeline and leads, helped us drive awareness around a brand new category and then allowed us to upsell to our core platform because as soon as people saw it, they're like, oh my God, this is a real problem, I want it. And that's the power of this growth hack. It's a tell me where it hurts growth hack. So to recap, for your ICP, find a little problem, build a little tool so that you can actually drive traffic to those little problems and then upsell them to the big problem. That's how you actually gain the attention of a massive part of your ICP and then convert them into your platform. Create real leads, real pipeline, and then educate them and then actually upsell them. 
This is an incredible growth hack that's worked consistently and I still see companies do it, use it well effectively as long as you start to understand the pattern and apply it. So that's what I had for you today. I hope you try out this growth hack. Comment below with your thoughts on how you're gonna try it. If you build it out, comment below, I'll take a look at it. If you haven't already, be sure to smash that like button. And also, if you think about growth hacks, then chances are you're building out the strategy, the growth strategy for your SaaS business. So this is why I invite you to check out my five point SaaS growth strategy guide. It's completely free. In it, I give you the five key areas that you have to define to build a growth strategy and all the related videos that I have on how to actually craft it all the way down to a one page strategy that you can use to align your entire team. So if you wanna get a hold of that, it's completely free. You go to getunstoppable.com slash strategy and you'll get access to it right away. Also, if you got value from this video, be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. I drop a video with actionable strategies like this three times a week. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon that way you'll get notified every single time I drop a video. If you have a fellow SaaS founder, if you're part of a SaaS group of founders and operators, please share this video, it'll mean the world to us. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business, but when you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK, and I'll see you in the next episode.